Good morning and aloha everybody. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. And uh, today we have an interesting show. Uh, it, it's about East and West. And the title of the show is Neither East Nor West. And I got the title from a poem. Uh, and I'd like to just read uh, the first few lines of the poem by Richard Kipling. Uh, and then I'll introduce my guest, Richard Turbin, in a minute. Oh, east is east, and west is west, and never the twain shall meet, till earth and sky stand presently at God's great judgment seat. Then, then the next two lines are the very important lines. But there is neither east nor west, border nor breed, nor birth, when two strong men stand face to face, though they come from the ends of the earth. And a strong man is in front of me right now, Richard Turbin. Rich, welcome. Good to Thank see you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Good to be here. You know, when I read that poem, when we were talking about doing a program, uh, I, I, I didn't think how much it, it, it meant, and it really connects with you, I think. Uh, do, you have any, do you have any thoughts about the poem, or the, especially the last two lines of the poem? Yeah. What, 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 what are your thoughts? Well, you know, I certainly do, and um, like everything else, you know, it was very personal with me. You know, I grew up in New York City, attended school. In the um, East? In the east, yeah, totally in the east, yeah, in the, uh, you know, in, in uh, New York and then Massachusetts. And, uh, but I was always, you know, fascinated, you know, with the rest of the world and I wanted to travel so much. And uh, so I'll just kind of tell you a yeah. little story. Um, and uh, when I was in law school, um, I had heard about the initiation of the East West Center in Hawaii. One of my, the first uh, law professor uh, at Harvard Law School had just, very prominent law professor, had just returned from Hawaii. He had just received a degree at the East-West Center. It was, this was big. I mean, it was really big at the time, way back east, you know, talking, uh, this is uh, 1966. And uh, I said, I, I want to, uh, you know, I want to I want to move to Hawaii after I graduate law school and and uh, even attend the East West Center or join the Peace Corps and go out to the South Pacific, which I did uh, when I finished law school in 1969. I was a Peace Corps lawyer in at that time the country of Western Samoa. Now it's the independent country of Samoa, but I still remember um, taking a trip uh, to Fiji. Uh, during that year, uh, sitting around a bar in Fiji with uh, about 10 or 15 students, you know, from all over Asia and the Pacific Islands, and they're all talking about Hawaii. Or they wanted to attend the University of Hawaii or go to the East West Center in Hawaii. I mean, at that point in time, I felt like Honolulu is the center of the Pacific. That's where all of the young people, the ambitious, smart young people, want, they want to come to Honolulu. And then after I finished the Peace Corps, I went to Hawaii. As you know, I became a lawyer uh, in Hawaii. And it struck me over the years, now we're, now we're what, 40 years later, 35 years later. 40, you know, my friend. Yeah, two, well, 2005. I'm now okay, talking okay, about when, 2000. When you, all right, 2005. Now, now I'm, I'm, I moved to 2005. You, you've moved up from becoming, you, you, were, you became a lawyer in what year? Oh, uh, in ni oh, 19, uh, well, 1971. I, I, uh, but I, I was, in Hawaii, when did yeah, you? Yeah, I, I moved to Hawaii, and after I finished up with the Peace Corps in 1970, moved okay. to Hawaii, uh, started working at the Public Defense office, okay. you know, doing uh, criminal law, you know, passed the bar exam in 1971, okay. uh, sworn into practice. Um, but, oh, and then I was, you know, doing my law practice, but oh, still extremely, you know, fascinated and enthralled uh, with uh, Asia and the Pacific, 
and legal matters what's the, there. What's the west? With the east has come west. Yeah, the east has so come west. <laughs> east has come west. But still not the judgment date. Yeah, but still not the judgment date, you know. Okay, but okay so in 2005, what happened? Well, 2005, um, I was elected. Actually, it was really 2004. I was elected to be the uh, president of the Hawaii State Bar Association. And I should say, before those years, in 2000, I was elected uh, chair of the tort and insurance practice section of the American Bar Association. And there, I was trying to thrust the American Bar Association, uh, that's the major law, so law association for American lawyers. I was trying to get them interested and involved in Asia. And I actually, uh, it was the year, uh, it was 1999, uh, I initiated a joint program with the American Bar Association and the Hawaii State Bar Association to have a, a, a mission to China, oh. to Guangzhou. Guangzhou oh. in Beijing, China. It was very exciting. And, uh, and your, your practice was what? What type of a practice? We, uh, you know, personal injury. I mean, I'm doing personal injury. Uh, which not, not international. Not international, yeah. you know. But you still nature. had this interest. Yeah, so this is a hobby. This is really <laughs> my major hobby. And then in 2004, I was uh, elected uh, president of the Hawaii State Bar Association. And here's where our host, Mark Schlav, becomes involved, heavily involved, in uh, this idea I have, uh, which is to, to push, shove, nudge the Hawaii legal community to start getting involved in, in other bar associations and legal affairs in the Pacific and in Asia. What, what was your perception at that time of the bar's interest or involvement? Let, let me put it like, like that. With very the, with insular. I mean, very parochial, because I, would, I was talking, you know, one, when I was campaigning for bar president and got elected, I was talking uh, to, uh, you know, the people, lawyers and leaders in the bar association and the staff, and you know, I, I, I might be exaggerating, but the basic message I got was, we're not interested. I mean, you don't make money. You know, lawyers are just interested in making money. That's the main consideration. And there's no money over there. Uh, so just focus on Hawaii law. You know, focus on our, our small island state in the in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, not, not over, not China or Japan or or, or the Pacific, or Australia, New Zealand. And then we had a lunch, uh, of Mark, Mark Schlob, our host, and myself, and we talked about this and how in our belief, so we're partners in crime, Mark, okay. our belief that Hawaii was ready to kind of open itself up, you know, to the, to the east. Uh, we didn't need an Admiral Perry, you know, sailing in with gun sh you know, gunships like uh, he did in Japan in 1856 or whenever, you know, opening up Japan. We, we needed to open up to Asia and the Pacific. And uh, you, sir, agreed and you encouraged me to do this. So we concocted a plan to have an international bar convention. Every year, the White Bar Association has a, has a bar convention, an annual meeting. And we decided uh, that in 2005, the year that I was serving as president, we were going to have an international uh, convention, an international meeting. And so we did uh, in October of 2005, very successful. We had as uh, 70 lawyers uh, from throughout the Pacific and Asia attend the meeting. And the, uh, the hallmark of the meeting uh, the, the, the major event was signing Hawaii Bar Association's first friendship agreement with the Daiichi Tokyo Bar Association. Okay, now what, what is a friendship agreement? And what, I mean, what was the idea behind that? I mean, why do we need a friendship agreement with other lawyers in another country? Well, it's a way to have a continued relationship. A friendship agreement means that we're, we're having a bond that we are really bonding 
forming a um, hopefully a permanent relationship, an ongoing relationship with another with another major bar association from a major city. Daiichi Tokyo means first Tokyo Bar Association, and it was the first bar association that was established in Japan. And and with respect to that, what did we have to do? I mean, what why you know what did and what was the reaction from the Daiichi Tokyo Bar when we very talked good. To well, we sent an ambassador from the Hawaii State Bar Association, namely yourself, the <laughs> eminent lawyer, March Glav. He was our ambassador, and he went to Tokyo, and he met with the leaders of the Daiichi Tokyo Bar Association and proposed a friendship agreement. And maybe you should uh, well, they, tell they, us about they, the, brought, their reaction. I brought, I brought a letter from you to them okay. saying, we would like to establish a relationship with you. Are you interested? And they, of course, they, well, let's think about this. And, but they got back to us very quickly, said, yes, we're interested, let's do it. And from that, what, what happened? What, what happened next? I mean, we, we've, we had a friendship agreement where we agreed to get together, and we agreed to share things, we, ag we agreed to be friends, uh, which sounds in a way, well, what does that mean? Well, that could mean a lot of business, too. I mean, we exactly. know each other. But then what happened? What, what well, happened? We had a ceremony. Uh, th that was a centerpiece of that bar convention in October of 2005. And we had a ceremony. I uh, hope it doesn't sound uh, too shishi, but it was at uh, the Royal, Royal Hawaiian uh, Hotel, the Pink Palace. And I remember it quite well in uh, one of their indoor outdoor rooms. And uh, we had uh, Chief Justice uh, Ronald Moon uh, present, uh, the leader of the Daiichi Tokyo International Committee, uh, a man named Kenji Hashidari, and uh, other uh, prominent lawyers and uh, leaders in the community were present. And it was a, uh, a memorable affair. And, 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 uh, and uh, we, I have the letter uh, right here where uh, Kenji Hashidari uh, agreed uh, to the friendship agreement, agreed to attend uh, our uh, signing ceremony, bringing other people abroad. And we also, uh, Mark brought the uh, renewal of the friendship agreement, uh, which was signed in uh, 2010. And the friendship agreement establishes the, the fact that every two years, we're going to have a get-together. We're going to, you Either know, here or in Tokyo. Alternating, yeah, alternating in alternating two years here and then in Tokyo. And uh, I think we've been out to Tokyo at least three times. Right. And, uh, you know, just fabulous events. We have seminars and programs where we educate uh, our, our sister bar association on the latest developments in Hawaii law and uh, Japanese law. And then we've followed up, I mean, successive bar presidents. We, we, should we and, talk and about well, that? I, and I want to, after the break, I want to talk about where that went, where the first, what happened after the first friendship agreement, and what happened in your life because of it. Okay. All right. But let's I, take a break. Okay. And come back and talk about that. Okay. Okay. Good. I'm going to the game and it's going to be great. Early arriving for a little tailgate. I usually drink, but won't be drinking today because I'm the designated driver and that's okay. It's nice to be the guy that keeps his friends in line, keeps them from drinking too much so we can have a great time. A little responsibility can go a long way because it's all about having fun on game day. I'm the guy you want to be. I'm the guy saving money. Let's go. We all play a role in keeping our community safe. Every day, we move in and out of each other's busy lives. It's easy to take for granted all the little moments that make up our every day. Some are good, others not so much. But that's life. It's when something doesn't seem quite right that it's time to pay attention. Because only you know what's not supposed to be in your everyday. So protect your everyday. If you see something suspicious, say something to local authorities. We, got a minute. we are back 
with Richard Turbin, and we're talking about East and West, and never the twain shall meet, but it looks like they have met. It looks like somehow the East and the West have come together and met and developed a friendship. And we did that through the Bar Association lawyers, making friends with each other in other countries. Now, Richard, we've talked about the Daiichi Tokyo Bar Association. That was our first Hawaii State Bar friendship agreement with a foreign bar. And I, that, that's actually a big thing for Hawaii, but it's a big thing for the United States, really. Uh, lots of other states would love to have these type of friendships with other bars. It, it, it's a good economic reason, but also friendship, right. ma making people. So, all right, so what happened after that first friendship agreement? You, you were the president for that year, 2005, of the Hawaii State Bar. You moved on, that's a year job. You moved on from there. What happened with respect to friendship agreements? And then I want you to talk at some point about how the friendship agreement that we started talking about in 2005 came right around to you and your family. Right, right. Well, of course, my concern after, you know, leaving as bar president after, a, you know, a very active year was that the legacy uh, should continue. And I, and I, I want to say, just uh, uh, to start off, I was very happy because when my year started, uh, we, uh, the Hawaii State Bar Association had an international bar section, which was totally moribund, maybe four or five members. Well, after this friendship agreement, it exploded. And, and now we have a tremendously active uh, international bar section with 30, 50 members uh, standing room only at meetings, a lot's being done. That was terrific. But then over and beyond that, my successor bar presidents started initiating other friendship agreements or other members of the bar started initiating, initiating others. And we formulated a friendship agreement with the Shanghai Bar Association. Uh, and then after that, we had the Seoul Bar, the Seoul Bar, the Suzhou, Suzhou, yeah. and it goes on and on. And and we can have more if we want, but we have to digest what we have <laughs> because we need to get together uh, regularly for these, uh, you know, to to continue to foster the uh, friendship agreements. We have to have meetings and we have to have. Uh, uh, programs, and that takes a lot of time. So, so just g generally speaking, friendship agreements, why are they important to Hawaii, and, and then why are they important to you? Well, okay, for, first of all, as far as lawyers are concerned, I mean, I think now there's a general recognition that um, uh, an international law practice, I mean, such as you have, Mark, is a real possibility in you know, practicing law in Hawaii, you can make a living as a lawyer uh, doing international law, and 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 these and and business uh, uh, springs out of that. I mean, no doubt, there's quite a few Hawaii lawyers who have uh, um, uh, started uh, uh, practicing in Japan or doing uh, Hawaii cases with Japanese connections. Likewise with the with China with China with Shanghai, likewise with Seoul Korea, likewise with Suzhou, uh, China. So there are many more lawyers who have actually secured business and income uh, from these friendship agreements. Plus the friendship. I mean the personal friendship is, is wonderful. It's it's dynamite. Uh, you visit these nations and you instantly have have friends. Uh, who you visit with, tour with, have dinner with. I mean, it just creates a, 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 a much more meaningful life and, and a better and, and quality of life. And likewise, they come here, and, and we're happy to see them. Exactly. We have regular dinners. I know, Mark, you sponsor them. We've hosted um, dinners at our home. Oh, yeah. With, you know, with... Lots uh, of fun. With lots of fun. I mean, great evenings. Yeah. Uh, you know, meaningful, uh, meaningful events in our life. And talking about a meaningful event in our life, we had a we had a tremendous event. Um, uh, my wife, uh, Ray Saint Chu, uh, who was a successor bar president and helped foster the Shanghai friendship agreement. Uh, she is from 
She was born in Nanjing and uh, I left and has a lot of Shanghai connections. And um, oh my God, about 20 years ago, we received a letter uh, from uh, Ray's uh, cousins uh, in Shanghai who are lawyers in Shanghai and wanted to create a letter relationship with us. But then uh, with all of the uh, political unrest uh, in China, we wrote back and our letters were, were, were apparently lost in the cosmos. They never received them lost track of them, and it was always, um, you know, a burning desire. We really would like to make contact with our Shanghai family. And then, lo and behold, it was almost a miracle. The Hawaii Bar Association had a program, intern program for Chinese lawyers. Yeah, so I'm, just let me interrupt a little bit, because I don't know how this all happens, okay? but. You know, you, you started this program in 2005 to make friendships. I, you weren't thinking about making personal connections with family members, but we started developing the friendship agreements, and Shanghai was a natural one that came up, and we started developing that. And as part of the Shanghai program, we started an intern program where we would accept a, a, a lawyer from Shanghai uh, for a few months in Hawaii, and they'd work with us and we'd get to know them and then we would maybe at some point exchange a Hawaii lawyer to Shanghai. Okay, so that was the program that was a direct result of something that happened in 2005 and then what happened? So then, uh, I guess round about uh, 2010 or so, um, all of a sudden I get an email. I get an email from my wife's cousin in uh, Shanghai who, uh, she remembered my name and Googled me and. And, and got my email and an and, uh, email address and sent me an email. Oh, you know, dear, uh, dear Richard, uh, uh, you know, I am uh, your wife's cousin, uh, you know, Hai Quinn, uh, Hai Quinn Cho, and uh, my, uh, my husband is coming to Honolulu uh, for this, uh, you know, friendship agreement intern program. Uh, can we... Uh, can we visit you? Uh, I, I'm going. I'm coming too with our daughter, and so lo and behold, we had uh, house guests, and uh, we made the connection, and we made the, uh, you know, we made the bond uh, with my wife's uh, cousins from Shanghai, and it has continued. Uh, we visited that. We visited Shanghai the year later, and uh, stayed with them, and they came back and visited with us, and. Uh, their daughter is going to school in uh, in the United States, and uh, you know we take care of her to some extent. So it's it's been, it's beautiful. It's really been a wonderful, wonderful uh, byproduct, uh, a gift from the uh, Hawaii State Bar Association international programs. Does it ever? Do you ever wonder how the coincidence all lined up and how it all connected and? Uh, how when we started this ball rolling for East and West to meet and get together, uh, that ultimately it would lead to your wife's family and that type of connection in this thing. It, well, how is it all connected, my friend? How 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 did it all? I mean, is it is it just uh, raw coincidence? Is that is it, I guess it, I guess well, that, it was a it was a, a totally unpredictable miracle. You know, is the best way to put it. But um, you know, that's how these miracles happen. Like somewhat, you know, karmic. You know, <laughs> okay, you know, so we send the karma out and it comes back. Well, it seems to be coming back, back in a way. good way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Way. Okay. Well, yeah. I, I don't want to get too uh, off the deep end, I guess. But uh, I, I found it it was quite quite r remarkable that that something that you'd started s several years before then came back and, boom, uh, really connected with you pr personally. I know you're also on the board of the East-West Center. Yeah, I'm chair of the uh, Board of Governors now, and that was a wonderful thing. That was kind of a miracle for me, because when I returned uh, from the Peace Corps, and I moved to Hawaii, and I got a job as a public defender, I did apply for an East-West Center grant. I, I, I was a recipient of it, but l almost the same day I received the grant offer, I also received notice that I passed the Hawaii State Bar exam. 
So very reluctantly, I, I gave that up to start my law practice or you know start practicing law. But I uh, maintained the relationship with East West Center and uh, had them join in in our you know international bar programs, uh, both with the American Bar Association, the Hawaii Bar Association, and then I was appointed to the board uh, in 2011. So I thoroughly enjoyed that. It's a wonderful institution. I'll just say about the East West Center, it's more appreciated, far more appreciated in Asia than in Hawaii and certainly in the United States. Um, we, we have our meetings, uh, for example, in Beijing. Two days in a row, we were the cover story on the uh, uh, China Daily Times. We had a meeting in Manila. Two days in a row, where the cover story in the Manila Times. And there have been uh, at least six. Uh, major uh, 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 presidents and prime ministers of major Asian nations who are East-West Center alumni, uh, and, and countless of uh, you know vice ministers and deputy ministers and leaders in business and education. So you're you're invested in East and West, meeting each other face to face, strong people talking with one another to make better relations. It's my passion. What can we do in Hawaii? How can we, I mean, are, are we doing enough? If not, what can we do? Well, we got to do whatever we can, certainly, to support the East-West Center. I mean, that's an ex extremely important institution. As you know, it's always under attack by certain uh, <laughs> elements in our, in our politics. Um, we receive half our money uh, from the federal government, from congressional appropriations. But another you know 16 17 million from you know private donations so we need to do what we can to help um the lawyers uh hawaii lawyers need to support the international uh programs of the of the hawaii state bar association um very grateful that uh think tank has um, uh has retained you to be a host for international for our international programs i think we constantly need to be aware and, and uh, I would urge our local residents to uh, attend these international events. Um, um, just for example, I'll just throw it out. Uh, the East West Center has a wonderful art gallery, and they just started a new program, which is called the Tree of Life. And there's all kinds of wonderful free programs that the East West Center uh, puts on uh, for local residents. And you can just check the, uh, the website uh, for that. And um, uh, and be welcome, of course, to our tourists, the all the uh, tourists from Asia that come to the come to Hawaii. And of course, we are. I mean, we're, we have so much uh, rich aloha in our state. And and so, East can meet West, and we can do it here in Hawaii. And some good can come from that. Good that enriches your life. Uh, in many ways. Absolutely, and just let's just bear in mind uh, that thankfully uh, there has not been a major war in Asia, and think about it, uh, since the resolution of the, Viet of the Vietnamese War. And uh, you know, that's a long time. I mean, that we're talking about 40, over 40 years of, of Asia being conflict-free, no major conflicts. And I think all the work we have done, the East West Center, the Hawaii State Bar Association, has something to do with that, you know? We never know how many wars we prevent, you know? And, and, and peace, and, and of course, Asia has become the greatest center of prosperity in the world today. It's been a success story, and Hawaii has been part of that success story, we need, need to continue being part of that success story. Richard, let's hopefully continue, and I want to thank you for being my guest today. Thank, thank you, you, Mark, and thanks for everything you do and for all the help you gave me. Right. Aloha. Aloha.